Hey YouTubers, just enjoying my weekend. It may be Wednesday for everybody else, but it is Saturday for me. Oh, here. There, that's better. <laughs> um, yeah, I've just been doing a little gardening, enjoying the little bit of sunshine I get on the west side of the building here. I'm kind of wondering... Um, with the, what the stock market's doing lately and everything, and the economy and the riots, I'm just kind of wondering uh, how much money really have uh, most of the people who subscribe to me lost? And I doubt it's very much. Uh, myself, I don't, I don't have anything in the stock market. I've got like, um, I've got like the company retirement program uh, that I work for, and some money goes into the stock market there. A lot of it goes into supposedly safe bond style investments. But um, I figure if I am going to invest for my own retirement, why should I just invest in more of the same? <laughs> Which seems, I mean, it would seems kind of kind of silly. It's like people who work for Enron or worked for Enron buying Enron stock, <laughs> which. I mean, putting all your eggs in one basket like that is just, you know, crazy in my opinion. Uh, so what I did, of course, everybody probably knows that I, uh, that I, first of all, busted my butt to pay my home off and get rid of all my debt. That's the biggest return I get, I imagine, because it saves me 5.5%. Try to match that these days without going into high risk investments like the stock market. Um, you can't really do it. Um, then of course, now that I've got a little <laughs> boatload of extra money, of course I keep keep some cash around just in case there's like a uh, like a cash machine downage or outage or powered out or any number of things. Even in Argentina when they have big huge uh, um, drops in their uh, <laughs> in their currency people still needed the money uh, to do things like buy eggs and whatnot especially people who live in the city like me I don't really live in the city city I live more in the semi suburban urban situation it's a suburban area but I've got like there's like high density housing in uh, in the area but it's like and I live in one of them at least it's a condo and not an apartment. And then, of course, I haven't locked this up, this stuff away yet. So, so uh, that's just what I have laying around the house. <laughs> uh, so basically, um, you know, that isn't going to lose money. These are worth about 40 bucks each, and um, probably in 10 years, they'll probably still be worth uh, the equivalent of 40 dollars each. So, um, I think it's a highly important thing to do, but that, all of this isn't really what the video is about, or this video, uh, what I'm mainly interested in, uh, today, since it's my day off, I've just been doing a little gardening, rearranging my deck garden a bit, um, that's the coolest thing about these self-watering planters. First of all, I don't have to water them, but every five or six days. And uh, I actually went like a little long on this one right here, this tomato plant, uh, about three days ago and <laughs> hadn't watered it for a week. And, um, and it started to droop and curl its leaves a little bit, so I knew it was time to top the reservoir off and walked out there with the, uh, with the jug and topped it off and it, leaves came back up, no harm, no foul. Uh, and then, of course, uh, but that's the that's the one apparently that uses the most water. But anyway, um, and the coolest thing about these, one of the coolest thing about these watt planters is you can move them around. Uh, for example, these two tomato planters, I had them just sitting over in the corner when I started them as little starts, about yay big. But um, but basically, they sort of got too big for this area, so I moved them a little bit, moved this one here back so that it will get a little bit better sun. 
and I moved this one here all over to the right for two reasons so it gets better sun and so that it will block some of that hot late afternoon sun that comes streaming into the uh, condo from the west uh, in the evening. So that will help to keep my condo a little bit cooler. Now in a small way that is one of the principles of permaculture is to uh, plant things where they will serve multiple functions and uh, you know multiple uses and without harming their uh, productivity and all that. I do wish the foliage was a little thicker on this uh, tomato plant, but it, uh, well, it'll, it'll help. Every little bit helps. Uh, interesting how we have uh, two different varieties of tomato plants here. We've got uh, cherry tomato. It's a bush style. I think they call that a determinant uh, bush because it, um, it stops. Uh, and whereas this one over here on the right, man, it'll keep growing until it covered like a square mile if you let it. <laughs> um, I've had to trim it back a couple times and remove, I mean, like redirect some of the growth back toward the center. And uh, uh, but basically, even now that the top is still trying to reach up to uh, find more things to climb on, and. Uh, and that's what they call it indeterminate. If it fell over like in its natural habitat, it would. Um, basically, tomatoes were a um, desert plant, uh, if I understand correctly, in the wild. And in the desert, it would like uh, crawl along the ground and uh, shoot more roots down into the dirt and, uh, and then just continue growing. Um, Whereas in the, of course, now that humans got it, uh, they sort of trellis it up. And, and of course, some of the uh, varieties were bred to, uh, to be determinants. Anyway, that's what they call an indeterminate, meaning it will grow forever. This one right here is a determinant, which means it's more of a bush than a uh, vine. So, basically... Um, so I'm continuing, of course, the deck garden. It's more of a practice than it is to actual pr actually produce a lot. But um, but basically, I'm you know it continues. I've got a I've got natural mulch or green mulch covering most of my beds, and the uh, purpose of that is to keep the soil covered to keep the soil from drying out. And then, of course, when it gets to be about six inches tall, I can chop it down with a pair of scissors and then sort of shove them down toward the soil. And when the top part of the plant uh, basically uh, is chopped off, the lower part, you know, it has to like balance the roots. And the lower part will then uh, dump all of those nodules into the soil. Uh, well, at least nitrogen fixing plants like alfalfa and clover which is what I've got over there um, and that will cause the uh, soil to be enriched because of all the nitrogen and nutrients and then of course the uh, stuff on the top will break down adding even more nitrogen to the soil and let the good times roll because you will start seeing massive yields um, down here in this one I'm going to um, plant a little bit of romaine and a few other varieties of lettuce because my main uh, lettuce planter over there has uh, most of the plants have bolted or at least are approaching bolt and uh, I'd like to have something down here which will take its place. Now uh, if you in the summertime of course when it's really hot um, and they get like really really bright sun over an extended time that's when the lettuce is triggered to bolt and flower and uh, and uh, produce seeds. Whereas if you uh, keep the lettuce or if you use the mobility advantage of planters, you can actually move planters around and move them down to a cooler place where it gets less sun and then you'll have a chance of uh, growing lettuce again without it immediately bolting. And now Right now, I'm actually going to go out there and do a little chop and drop. But, uh, so, oh, and that planter right in the middle. I just uh, planted this one today. 
what it is is duckweed. It's like a plant that's like massively protein rich. I think it was like, uh, I think it, I heard it was like 40% protein or some wild uh, amount like that. But in if we had like a shit hit the fan situation, people could actually take uh, kiddie pools or just grab a shovel and throw some plastic down and fill about a 10 by 10 area with water and throw some duckweed in there with some soil and some fertilizer, uh, topsoil or compost, whatever they got. And the uh, duckweed will grow just insanely fast. It's supposed to double every 48 hours in good conditions, like in the summertime. Um, but it'll grow year round, at least where I live, as long as it's not frozen. So um, it's kind of, I don't really plan on eating much of it, but uh, it would be a light, the seed, it's basically a seed. Uh, I could actually take it and put it into production if we had like a supply disruption um, event, like, uh, I don't know, anything economic or even something like uh, um, Yellowstone blowing up or something. Um, that would certainly disrupt our uh, our supply <laughs> system. <laughs> so basically, uh, then we could just totally produce insane amounts of duckweed <laughs> in a real short period of time. Uh, I got that a couple weeks ago as a little tiny envelope, and I had it sitting on my uh, table on the inside in a little bowl, uh, and it grew fast, but... Uh, but now that it's outside, as of today, uh, I think we'll get better results. So, I think we'll go out here and do a little chop and drop. Got some uh, construction going over there, new decks being built or uh, replaced. Yep, there's the clover. I uh, generally chop it down to about half its height. sort of a, try to get that stuff down on the soil surface a little bit. There. Who needs fertilizer when you can just do this? Here's the duckweed. I'll probably uh, give you guys an update on this stuff in a day or two. In fact, probably two days. Let's see if it doubles over two days. Okay. What are my plans for the weekend? I think probably tomorrow I'll run over to the survival center and pick up about three cases of that Yoder's, uh, um, that Yoder's uh, beef. Uh, beef chunks, yeah, that's what I had the other day. Um, that stuff will last 10 years on the shelf, uh, according to their website, and uh, it cooks really quick. <laughs> and uh, you can make gravy out of the juices, and it's like a meal for like three people. Add a few potatoes or some, some powdered potatoes or a couple of cans of green beans, and you've got yourself a meal. And... Um, See, a case is about $95, and there's 12 cans in a case, and it, you, cans usually run about $7.50 each, and um, they got about 2,200 calories in them, if I remember correctly, and uh, I think it's a good, real 
serious convenience food. Plus, it's uh, it's got a bunch of nutrition, and it's probably not loaded with hormones. <laughs> but um, so, I guess that's about all I got for you. That's that's what I'm gonna do with my weekend. I might go to the range, see if I can blow the dust off one of my pistols and <laughs> do a little shooting. So I will see you guys later.